a mile Here he ago. comes. Here he comes. Who's going to get off? Here he comes. Forward? Here he comes. He's got him this time. It's going to be a drag race. Wow. They touch. They touch. Crap. Oh, even got him. It's hard to imagine a NASCAR without Darlington Raceway. It's hard to think that this track was once on the chopping block, that we really had a reality set where Darlington would not be on the NASCAR schedule and would be cut down from its historic time in the sport. But this finish saved it, at least in the long term, and in the short term, prolonged it long enough to reach the long term. The track had two dates since nearly NASCAR's beginning when the track was founded, and one of the biggest races in NASCAR's schedule would end up being the famed Southern 500, a race that would test man versus machine in the early days and even in the later days. It's one of the few races that honestly still completely takes everything from a driver and team to win. Even last year, in 2022, we saw multiple drivers who would run up front for much of the night, lose engines right at the end, or just lose the race from somebody else who could outstand them longer. It's one of the most throwback tracks you can get, and it's fitting that there is a throwback date on it. But, like I said, Darlington was near death at one point. But what happened? Why did it get that way? But more importantly, how did it resurrect itself to become more than just another racetrack? Just another sad story in the history of NASCAR against the most consistent army in human history, time. Well, you have to look back at NASCAR's expansion in the 90s and 2000s. In this time, NASCAR was going to new markets, new places, new heights in every single way when it came to sponsorship, viewership, attendance, everything you could think of, NASCAR was hitting on all cylinders. And with that, they had to leave some behind. Early on, it was tracks like the Nashville Fairgrounds. In the late 90s, the famous incident of losing North Wilkesboro from the schedule for different markets that don't fit the normal Southern NASCAR market. Then you've got Rockingham in 2004. We'll talk about that in a little bit. These were all axed by the end of the 2004 season, and only North Wilkesboro has returned among them, while efforts from the other two to bring them back almost 20 years, or in some cases almost 30 to 40 years later, are still being made, it is very hard to undo what NASCAR has unraveled by taking historic tracks off the schedule. Expansion was putting many tracks in danger. Darlington and Martinsville were two of those. There was real talk in the mid-2000s about Martinsville losing one of its dates, if not both of them, so they could hit better markets. And Darlington was even more on the chopping block than any of the others. It was pretty clear to anyone at the time that Darlington would have been the first track that they would have gotten rid of if they needed to make room for another bigger market. Luckily, this didn't happen in the case of Darlington and Martinsville, though. The spring race would be gone in 2005, while Fontana would get their date on Labor Day weekend, which was historically the one for the Southern 500 in 2004. In 2004, that meant that November would be the host month for the Darlington's Southern 500, or in this case, Mountain Dew Southern 500. This would be the race before the championship race and would be the ninth race of the chase for the next L Cup, the newly implemented points system of the 2004 system. But that was not to last long. It was merely a holdover for NASCAR's bigger plan at the moment for the track. Then in 2005, the 500 miler for Darlington moved to Mother's Day weekend as a Saturday night race. Now, from here, we had a bit of a new tradition start up with the track. It was a Mother's Day tradition, or at least it felt like a tradition to me. Listen, I came in in 2005. I did not experience NASCAR with two Darlington dates until much later on in my NASCAR experience. And when I thought of Darlington, I didn't think of Labor Day weekend. What I always connected Darlington with, for me at least, was me shopping at the last possible moments for any last minute gifts from my mom or grandma or anyone for Mother's Day and then hurrying home so I could watch Darlington that night. And this is how it stayed for about a decade. 
And in 2008, fans of the track could breathe another sigh of relief as the track had a new surface on it in a repave, and it put many at ease that the track would be around long term. There was no reason to spend so much money on it if they weren't going to keep it that long. So, from 2008 to 2012, it really settled into the COT era more than anything. The track hosted many major events at that point. You had 2009, Mark Martin, with his comeback season continuing with a win in this race. 2011, Regan Smith with the underdog victory over Carl Edwards. And then also, the post-race, having a fight between Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch. And in 2012, Jimmy Johnson would get Hendrick's 200th win at the famed facility. Also in this time, NASCAR did downsize. While still being very popular in the mainstream as the second most watched sport in America through even past 2012, it did go down in attendance, for instance. 29% down in the average attendance for every NASCAR race, from 135,000 on average a race in 2005 to 97,000 average a race in 2012. Darlington's race in this time went from only 70,000 watching in person in estimate to 63, only a 10% drop. It was clear that Darlington had more staying power than much of the changes that NASCAR had made in its time. And in 2013, it seemed to be the same way, but this would be the final Southern 500 weekend that would be on Mother's Day weekend. In 2014, Darlington was moved to April again, and it was a damn good race with a really good crowd, great finish, and everything that made Darlington great really was in this race. And it proved to be a holdover to the next major step of bringing this track back to the prominence it deserved so much. From 2015 to 2019, we would see a new golden age begin for Darlington Raceway, the return of the Southern 500. And I don't mean just the name itself, I mean it returned back to its initial date. After about 12 years removed from the last Southern 500 on Labor Day weekend, NBC would once again bring us that race in coverage. And with it, it was a throwback style weekend with graphics for throwbacks, throwback paint schemes, and even Ken Squire and Ned Jarrett jumping in the booth sounding like they didn't even miss a beat in their time out of the booth in over a decade. In this, 2015 saw over 6 million people watch the four and a half hour marathon race. And it worked in bringing the race back from a generally average race every year that NASCAR had seemed to work to make a race where someone would say it was just every other race to a crown jewel event once again. And like I said, it stayed like this for the next four or five years. From 2015 to 2019, this is how the Southern 500 was. It was a staple again. But much like the rest of the world, 2020 changed the game again. And while many tracks, some of which had really good racing at this point, had been downgraded or just downright removed from the schedule from 2020 onwards, Darlington was the big winner of the pandemic hitting the sport and the world. With it hitting, it meant huge changes with the schedule's lineup in order to run a full season. And in this, Darlington didn't get one race or two, but instead got three races put on the schedule. The first race back would also be the first major sporting event back since the pandemic started, and 6.3 million people plus watched this race at home. The highest Darlington viewership since 2011, and a number in viewership that would honestly match up with just about every season that fit into NASCAR's peak popularity. The second race back would be the first scheduled midweek race that NASCAR had had in over half a century, if not ever. Darlington was made essential for NASCAR in this time. And of course, the Southern 500 would still be there, but it would open up the playoffs. Every one of NASCAR's races at Darlington meant something different and better for the sport at the time. And for NASCAR, well, they saw this. And from 2021 to today and possibly onwards, you've seen the return of two Darlington races a year, as it probably always should have been. The first date is back on Mother's Day weekend, this time on Mother's Day itself, and is now the host of the throwback weekend, only 400 miles. It still is a race that many look forward to and a staple still. And the Southern 500, well, still opens the playoffs and still is a crown jewel. Both of these races have a reason to be here. Now, the question is, what does the future look like? 
listen, NASCAR's future at the moment is fluid and open. They have made plenty of changes to bring back old fans, and a lot of them have been pretty good, including what they've done with Darlington. But just because they have that and relatively good attendance does not mean Darlington is safe to be two races forever. There has been a reason for it to be there, but viewership needs and wants change over time. North Wilkesboro could easily be the throwback race, and Darlington could be relegated back to a single date again, depending on schedule shifts and different things like that. So, I just want to say, while it's good now, fans need to remember to keep fighting to keep it that way. But with that, I'm going to pass it on to you. What do you think about Darlington Raceway's history since it was downgraded for expansionist ideals? Let me know down in the comments below. Why not leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And be sure, if you're at Darlington this weekend, to come up and say hi. We're going to be there with the podcast party bus. So, until then, have a good one.